This video is going to be about the home-built Velomobile. If you haven't checked out my book and the links below, or you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so. And let's get into it. So to start with, say you have a recumbent bike, and some people may want to build a Velomobile out of even an upright bicycle, which is entirely possible. You are going to get better aerodynamics if you have a fully covered vehicle, even if it's upright. But of course, the best ones are the recumbents. So this is a beautiful Bachetta job. I love the way they put on that big zipper fairing in the front, and the seat looks so much like an actual car seat. You want to sit in it, it's just so comfortable. What can you do with this? Well, you can do something like this. These are called body socks. Some people are selling them for a few hundred dollars, but you can also figure it out yourself. Keep in mind, this is $500 and the zipper fairing for your recumbent is gonna be another 500. So this is a thousand dollars extra. This of course would be the professional way of doing it. This is a Lightning, Lightning F40. This is possibly the best and the fastest of the two wheel designs. The most Velomobiles are three wheels. Some of them even have four wheels, but the two wheel thing has the advantage partly that you can actually remove these panels and convert it back into an average recumbent bicycle, but also the lesser rolling resistance that you get from having just one dead wheel that you have to push forward instead of having two or even three. Lightning had actually come out with a different model recently. This one costs, it starts at minimum $9,000. It's a great bike, it's very lightweight, you can keep it in an apartment, you can disassemble it, put it in an elevator. I love the bike, but it costs $9,000. So Lightning came up with this $4,000 offer. It's something like half the money you would you would spend on on a big Lightning design. And uh, you can see it's kind of ridiculous. The way the guy looks pedaling this thing, it, he still gets the weather protection and the speeds that they are listing for this thing are off the charts. If these numbers are true, I mean, this looks as ridiculous as it gets, but it is $4,000. You could buy just a recumbent for 2,500 and then add this thing onto it from the company. I don't think it looks good enough for me. Maybe it looks good enough for you. This is how you get in. It's basically the same thing as they are doing over here, except you don't have this magnificent aerodynamic front, and that would add a lot more to the price. I think the bicycle is also somewhat cheapened, and it, well, this does have the same zipper and everything, so I think there are other small details that make the 9000 version more expensive. But I'm giving you a link to this page. If you look at the speed numbers, they are really amazing. If this is if these are true numbers, 30 miles per hour for on the flat. And on the down, downhill, 60 miles per hour is actually not unbelievable because I have seen reports from people without any fairing at all getting up to that speed. And I have seen videos of upright bikes going up to 55. So that's totally believable. But to cruise at 30 miles an hour with this bag, with this potato looking thing, that's kind of hard to believe. Of course, this was their masterpiece. So look at how much they charge just for the fairing. The just for the fairing is $1,300. So that's a lot of money. Compared to that, can you build something better? You could buy some fabric and I guess you could stretch it out and use some tape or glue to tape it to the to the fairing in the front. And I'm telling you, they are selling these things. I'm giving you a link below. This so-called body sock kit is $500, but it comes in addition to the trike itself and the front fairing. It looks kind of funny, but it does work. Is it as good as a professionally designed Velomobile? I'm not sure. There is even a Facebook page for these body sock people. 
I'm not too crazy about the way it looks, to be absolutely honest. So here is one interesting project of somebody just taking a very cheap upright bicycle and turning it into a 40 or 45 mile per hour monster. And this is all done with the boxes you are getting from Amazon or Walmart. Everybody is getting boxes in the mail, so it's free. You just pile up that material and you buy, spend 10, 20 dollars, dollars on tape and you're in business. This is all taped together out of every Joe Amazon or other wrapping boxes. Now here he, he discusses how much he, he thinks the speed in increases, but I think that it's always going to depend on the bicycle itself as well. 35 mile per hour is really, really nice on an upright bicycle. Well, it might have been on the downhill. So check out this video. And here is a far more professional job. This is also, to me at least, it seems that this is uh, some kind of a cardboard or paperboard creation. But it's very elegantly done. And if you look at the discussion going on on the page of this video, you'll find that he created a Velcro door on it. So the way he gets in is he opens the door on one side and he gets in and he Velcros the door back on. And it's colored, it's painted, it's much more elegantly done than the other one. But it does look like maybe not paper, maybe a plastic board. Actually, when you're looking at it close up, it doesn't look as slick as it looks from far away. But the person who's doing the video is himself on a road bike. And you can definitely see that this guy with the full fairing is moving a lot faster. Not to mention the weather protection he's getting. Even if it's not raining, if you're riding in the cold season, it just makes a huge difference to have that protection. So this is just an example of what can be done for practically nothing. Now, not all of these are two-wheelers. There are three-wheel trike-based velomobiles as well. And this one is a really ugly one, but it's kind of funny how somebody actually would build this. And you still get the speed advantage. I mean, look at how fast the guy is moving. I disagree with the design of many of these things. Uh, this one was actually built out to to be more than just a, a velomobile. It has a it has a fan in it, like a cheap air conditioner, and it has some foldable camping parts so that you could actually lie down in it and sleep in it. Maybe even do some cooking. I'm not sure if I would want this. <laughs> this is a little bit. I can see that the material is coroplast and I'm going to say more about that option. You could use you could use cardboard for any of these projects really. It just would not last as long as plastic does. I don't even know if this is plastic or cardboard. It's stitched together. Hmm. Now here is something much much more professionally built. This is also a home-built velomobile, but this is a careful job. This must have taken a good number of hours. And this looks like a, somebody who might be doing something similar professionally. Very nicely done, polished, and I guess you could apply compound to it just like on a regular car and then professionally paint it. It does look like some sort of a plastic. And there's an integrated front headlight, which is a beautiful job. But still, if you buy plastic panels, it's still something that can be accomplished for a lot less than what you would be paying from a company. Now, this is a beautiful job. This is like, this is a professional looking velomobile that you, you could sell, even though it is homemade. Here's another one definitely made of caroplast. Folding, folding, cutting, and at first taping it together. And the way you put it together is with a heat gun. You melt the edge of the plastic, and that's how you put it together. So as incredible as these projects look, based on what you can accomplish with this amazing material, it's actually not so earth-shaking, although it takes time, definitely. If you want to make something that cool, 
it, it is going to take some time and here is a more homemade looking one but it is fully covered your top and bottom the whole area around you is covered if you have a house at trite then you could just buy it stock for five thousand dollars with the top rain cover and use a piece of caroplast to finish the bottom and you would be probably well under six thousand dollars nice job it's a really nice job you can bend fold and cut and heat this material to seal it together and probably the aerodynamics are almost as good as you would get from from a, a company and great stability as well so what is caroplast caroplast uh, the word comes from corrugated plastic there used to be corrugated cardboard this is the same thing but it's made out of plastic the plastic is supposedly recyclable although I really would prefer uh, natural materials but if you have to use something at least use if you have to use plastic at least use recyclable plastics and fifty dollars you get ten boards three foot long and two feet wide so for under a hundred dollars you can do a lot or maybe two hundred dollars at most you are going to need a heat gun and don't be cheap on the heat guns I'm giving you links below you probably want to get a smaller heat gun with a more precise nozzle like this one I have a big one that I originally bought to strip paint so I have something that is more like this but for this kind of work you really want something with a very precise nozzle to target what you're doing this is too much so and these are some of the tools um, it's really not difficult to set this up you need a cutting tool a knife or a blade and you need this tool as well although you could use the back of a scissor or a knife from the kitchen but I do do recommend that people use professional tools they are so cheap they are really just a few dollars and you bend you cut and he's not showing the heat gun but you can seal it together as well and this is a nice cut you you you, you can make a partial cut like you cut halfway through and I assume you can put some tape there and you have to have to have a heat gun to put it together it's fascinating work not as good looking as a professional job I would much prefer to have a professional job but if you already have a recumbent or even an upright bike you may not want to spend nine thousand dollars on a professional velomobile and we are when we are talking about upright bikes like this one I mean you if you already have a bike like this you can build a velomobile case for it for a couple hundred dollars instead of going out there and uh, buying a recumbent for nine thousand dollars minimum also upright velomobiles are not available so some people might actually prefer to remain upright because of riding in traffic because of being more visible and so on I'm not so terrified about the visibility of velomobiles because some of them have an upright seat those I think are totally cool your head is going to be at least as high as the top of an average Toyota Corolla or some kind of passenger car so you are going to be visible and you always have to watch the back he has a, a rear view mirror you always have to watch your back because there's always going to be that one percent character who just doesn't give a damn all right this is it for the current video and I'll be back